Muse, tell me the things done by golden Aphrodite, the one from Cyprus who arouses sweet desire for gods and who subdues the races of mortal humans and birds as well who fly in the sky as well as all beasts, all those that grow on both dry land and the sea. According to the legend of the birth of Aphrodite, the Cyprian goddess rose from the foam of the sea off Cyprus. Zephyr, the western wind, pushed her gently towards the island where she was welcomed by the hours. Having bathed her, they dressed her in a nice veil and adorned her with golden jewels, after which they escorted her to Mount Olympus so that she could be in the company of the other gods. <laughs> Είναι από την Κύπρο που ξεκίνησε η ιδέα, η αξία της θέας του έρωτος, πολύ πολιτισμένο, σε σύγκριση με τις άλλες θρησκείες, και η προέλευση της λατρείας της Αφροδίτης μπορεί να είναι η Κύπρος, ώστε θα είναι η Κύπρος που έκαμε αυτό το δώρο στην Ευρώπη. In the book Gibris, the Aphrodite of Cyprus, Ancient Sources and Archaeological Evidence by French archaeologist Dr. Jacqueline Garayorgis, the spread of the adoration of the Cyprian goddess during antiquity is documented through archaeological research. This adoration is transferred from Cyprus to Greece and later to the rest of Europe as well as North Africa during the Hellenistic and Roman years. The origins of the goddess Aphrodite on the island of Cyprus date back to the Neolithic era. Archaeologists have brought to light from the depths of the Cypriot earth the first symbols of adoration of her early form, a prehistoric goddess of fertility carved in stone by the island's first inhabitants. Later, during the 4th millennium BCE, the people of Cyprus, and particularly those in the area of Baphos, adored her as a primeval goddess of fertility, a protector of pregnancy, birth and infants. From these areas, archaeologists unearthed countless cruciform idols depicting women giving birth, similar to that represented on Cyprus's one and two euro coins. During the second millennium BCE, Cypriots worshipped Aphrodite as an omnipotent goddess, protector of life, the wealth of the land and the well-being of humans and their kings. She was, for the then residents of Cyprus, the great goddess. The Cyprian goddess had also assimilated a number of characteristics previously attributed to deities of the Middle East. It is for this reason that the inhabitants of the island seem to have preferred to depict her naked with ample breasts and huge earrings. The Archaeans who arrived on the island at around the end of the second millennium BCE adopted the adoration of the local goddess and in the process also refined her appearance depicting her as a deity replete with grace and beauty, the very epitome of femininity. The goddess fostered fertility, inspiring love and desire. Famed orgies, sacred weddings and sacred prostitution may possibly have formed part and parcel of her adoration in Cyprus. She was also a protector of nature, childbearing, infants and seafarers, as well as of kings and their kingdoms on the island of Cyprus. Furthermore, she was the protector of copper production, which is the reason for which Greek mythology has her married to Hephaestus, the god of metallurgy. During the first millennium, she was worshipped as the one goddess queen, which is why one of her honorifics was Anassa. The same period also sees her being called Aphrodite Paphia, Golgia, or quite simply the Cyprian goddess, in a direct and unquestionable reference to her place of origin. 
from as far back as Homeric times, but also later, during the Classical period, the myth of Aphrodite spread from Cyprus to Greece. From there, during the Roman era, it also spread to the entire realm of the Roman Empire. In addition to the lands washed by the Mediterranean Sea, the adoration of Aphrodite during this period extends throughout Europe. It is for this reason that we encounter statues and mosaics of Aphrodite in Britain, Spain, France, Germany and other European countries, as well as in North Africa. During the Roman years, when Cyprus was a part of the Roman Empire, the grand celebration of Aphrodite at her sanctuary in Baphos attracted pilgrims from the entire Mediterranean and gave rise to annual celebrations, which constituted an international, for the times, cultural event. The Emperor Titus visited the famed Baphos sanctuary and consulted its oracle. The Roman emperors considered themselves descendants of Aphrodite, who they renamed as Venus, given that, according to one myth, the union of Aphrodite and the shepherd Anchises gave rise to Aeneas, the founder of Rome. Customs which have survived to this day point to a carryover of the adoration of Aphrodite into Christianity. Various aspects of the adoration of the mother goddess were assimilated into the adoration of the Virgin Mary. In Cyprus, we encounter the Holy Mother, or Banaia, as a gurotrophus, nurturer of young men, and galactotrophusa, milk-bearing nurturer, as well as Banaia Aphroditisa. At the same time, the memory of Aphrodite's name has continued to appear in legends such as that of the Regina, inspired also by the island's medieval queens and linked to many medieval sites as well as being present in Cypriot folk tales. During the Renaissance and through the arts and letters of the time, the myth of Aphrodite helps elevate Eros to the major cultural happening of the Western world. The same time sees the myth of Aphrodite taking a significant place in sculpture and the visual arts. Aphrodite with either Adonis or Ares and depictions of the myth of her birth or the Trojan War form the favourite subject matter of many European artists. In addition to sculpture and painting, the myth of Aphrodite had an influence on other forms of art such as theatre, poetry, music and literature. Shakespeare, in his epic lyrical work Adonis and Aphrodite, showcases Aphrodite's desire for the mortal Adonis and her lament over his demise. International conferences, exhibitions, publications and lectures having the goddess Aphrodite as their subject all constitute an indication of the constant and continuing international interest in the multi-dimensional form of the Cyprian goddess. The establishment of the refined form of the myth of Aphrodite as a symbol of love and beauty is without any doubt the best present that Cyprus, as a bridge between East and West, ever gave to Europe. I think it's a great thing to do with a great thing to do διαμορφώθηκε στην Κύπρο από τους Κυπραίους και από τους Ελληνές, μεταφέρθηκε στον δυτικό κόσμο και έγινε μία από τις πιο ε, πολιτισμένες αξίες του δυτικού πολιτισμού. 